we're joined today by two weight, three time world boxing champion Carl Frampton, fresh from his victory over Nanito Denner at the weekend. Carl will be chatting to us about his journey to the very top of the sport and how resilience, initiative, and the right support can all help you succeed. Hello and welcome to Make It Super Assembly, live from here at Glen Gormley High School. If you're watching on Facebook, leave your questions for Carl in the comment section and we'll do our best to get to them. Carl, what's it like being back in your old school? It's, it's good, it's all right, it's a bit strange. Um, to be honest, everything seems a bit smaller, but um, no, it's good, it's good to be back. You've brought a couple of special items for you? Talk yeah. through them. Uh, yeah, I brought a couple of belts. This this one here is first world title I won um, against Kiko Martinez, won in Belfast in the, down at the Titanic Slipways. Very proud night for me. And uh, the second one is, this is probably my, my favorite. Favorite looking, looks the best, I think, as well. But um, I was a big underdog going in this fight against Leo Santa Cruz in New York. And I went and... Uh, and beat him and brought it home with me. So very, very proud of this one. That was an incredible night in New York. When you reflect on the weekend and, and the victory over Nanito Denner, it's got you back up and running and back in the world stage again. Yeah, it was a good good performance. I was, I was very happy with how I performed. Denner, um, a dangerous fighter. Um, you, have you seen the 11th round? He clipped me and, and kind of shook me a little bit, but um, I recovered well. But I was very, very happy about performance, considering that you know, there's been a lot of doubt and stuff recently, and people are saying he's getting a bit older, or Frampton's getting a bit older, or he's over the hill, blah, blah, blah. But I think probably after the first Santa Cruz fight, that was the second best performance of my career. What kind of people were you when you were the same age as all the uh, peoples here inside the hall? I think I was all right. I wasn't, I wasn't a bad pupil. I don't think so anyway. I probably could have done a little bit better in school, something I regret, if I'm being honest. Um, but I was, I was okay. I loved sport, loved PE. Um, I, was, I was okay. What would you say to 13-year-old Carl Frampton right now? Any regrets from, from your, your school days, or is there anything you would say to him right now, a little um, advice? Maybe, maybe just try a bit harder in school. I think I was... I was a little bit lazy with my schoolwork. Um, I wasn't daft, but I could have done better. I could have got better results, definitely. What kind of reaction you got from the, the teachers here? Many of them been here in your time as well? I've seen a few. Um, Mr. Officer, Mr. Stephan, uh, Miss Livingstone as well, um, who I don't think is called Miss Livingstone anymore. Um, so I've seen a few, a few recognizable faces, Mr. Patterson too. So yeah, it's been, it's been good to see a few old faces. If anyone was having a tough time in school, what kind of advice would you give them to, to stay focused? Um, I don't know, really. I think you got to just listen. Everyone has a tough time at school. I think growing up, um, you know, I'm there's there's things that, that go on that are beyond your control. But no one really has it easy at school, do they? Really, growing up. And I have a couple of kids now, and I'll be telling them the same that whatever happens, happens, and you just have to. Hold your head high and get on with it. How did you manage to combine doing as well as you could in school and also the boxing side of it? Because obviously you've been a professional now for maybe 15 years or so, but you know, what was it like striking that balance? It, it was difficult because I, I, kinda, I was completely focused on, on the boxing. And I remember even having to rearrange GCSE exams because I was at the European School Boys, I think, and I had the I remember having to like come in early and do a it was a French exam or something anyway I can't remember exactly but boxing kind of dictated my life and and I've been lucky that I've I've made a career out of it and I've done well because there's 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 people who have probably been more skillful than me in around my age but maybe haven't had the dedication that I've had and and could have could have done what I've done but they just maybe didn't have the dedication so it was difficult for me, but I, I've, I've been really, I've been lucky that I've been able to do what I'm doing through boxing. Um, I've had a decent education, could have been better. 
so in that sense, yeah, I, I'm lucky that I'm, I'm performing and doing what I'm doing as a fighter. How important is that mix between talent and work ethic? Because you alluded to it there. Yeah, I think, I think you know, you need, you need a bit of both, if I'm being honest. Um, I think that, again, work ethic, though, is, is really important and dedication and commitment. Um, because you know, I was on, I boxed for, for Ireland as an amateur. I was on the high performance team for, for quite a while, but there was, there was better fighters than me, much better fighters. I'd have probably been kind of, say there was 20 fighters, I'd have been maybe in terms of skill level in the bottom half. Um, but I was just a wee bit more dedicated and determined and, and just committed to it. One of our early Facebook questions is, what kind of advice would you give, not necessarily a boxer, but a sportsman at the age of maybe 15, 16, who has decisions to make and, and has to strike that balance? Um, I think, well, what I would say to other boxers, and I suppose it applies to any other sport and, and anything in general, really, if you want to make it, is you can't really be half in, half out. It's... It's boxing, for example, is a sport where you need to be, if you want to make it, you need to be completely dedicated. Um, you can't kind of just be in it a little bit and not be too committed. If you want to get to the top in, in any sport, I suppose, you need to be, you need to be the whole way in and give it, give it everything while you can. Your father now, um, would you like your kids to go down the, the road of, of sport, whether, you know, Carla Rossa, if they turn around to you, maybe in six, seven years and say, look, Daddy, I want to be a footballer, I want to be a rugby player, I want to be a boxer? Sport, yes, I would. I would love both kids to be involved in sport and, and have something where they're dedicated to and, and they're committed to and they put a lot of time and effort to. Um, boxing, I'm not so sure. It's a, it's a hard sport. I, I know what it's like. And um, when you're a kid, having to diet and make weight, and it's not... I remember that, you know, and I remember the hard times, so... I prefer, uh, I'd love my, my little boy to be a something else, football, um, anything maybe except it. But, uh, you know, if he wants to have a go at the boxing, I'm sure he'll ask at some point. I'll let him, but I'll not be forcing him into it, that's for sure. Ethan on Facebook has uh, kind of been asking, what's the most fun you've had in your career? Not necessarily from a sporting perspective, but overall and in your career, because, you know, you rub shoulders with celebrities all the time. You, you've... You've headlined the Las Vegas, you've headlined New York, some fantastic experiences you've had. What's been the most fun you've had throughout your career? Uh, the most fun? Probably, do you know what? I, I done a training camp for my last fight in Tenerife, um, and we went, to, we went for the altitude, um, Mount Titi, which is, I think, 3,500 metres above sea level. So that's what the reason why we went there, but it was, it was good crack, and it was the most I've enjoyed training or a training camp. In my whole career, I'm, you know, I'm 31 now. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a spring chicken. And boxing, it's, I've got to a point now. Hard to believe this, but I'm only starting to really enjoy it now. And uh, I'm, I'm almost at the end. So I wish I had a fella like this a few years ago. Why is that? In terms of the the enjoyment factor, I mean, we look. Obviously, you're very prominent in social media. You're out singing. You're having karaoke battles. You're a good singer now, I'll give you that. You're a good singer. You're, I'm not going to make you sing, but you're a very good singer. That camaraderie, maybe something you have you don't get as a boxer because it's an individual sport, and you seem to have that there with a the group around you, and you're all similar age and all a similar mentality. It just, just big characters in the gym, the new gym that I'm at in, in Manchester, um, just full of good, good people, good characters, and since I've joined this gym and teamed up with Jimmy Moore, who's my new trainer, I wake up in the morning, and I've never really felt this before, but I look forward to going to the gym. I, I hated training. Like, I've always hated training. I've spoke about it in the past, past how much I've hated it, and I just do it because I see it as a job. But now, I, I don't know, something, something's changed, and um, it's just the, the gym is full of, full of characters. You're, we train hard when we have to, but there's plenty of laughs as well. Carl, this is as much an opportunity for uh, people on the internet and myself to ask you questions, but also the pupils here. Our first question is going to be from Clara. What would you say to your 15-year-old self about to do your GCSEs? Um, where is Clara? I couldn't Clara's see. just over oh, here. Oh, there, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, what would I say to myself? Okay, I would say revise more. Um, don't do it on the bus on the way to school. That's not enough. Um, 
Yeah, just, just revise more because, again, I don't think I was, I don't think I was daft, but I don't think, I had done okay with my results, but I think I could have done it a little bit better and, and simply revising is something that I maybe didn't do as much as I should have. Zoe has her next question. Most people don't like being punched in the face, but what, did, what made boxing so appealing to you? Uh, appealing from the start, I'll tell you why. I was, I was a kid, I was seven, and I'm small now, so imagine what it was like when I was seven. And, and uh, I was kind of, wasn't, pick, well, maybe I was a little bit in the street, like picked on and pushed around, and um, I'd have, you know, let people walk all over me. But when I joined the boxing club, I, one of the first nights I sparred, and I, I got in the ring with a couple of other guys who are maybe the loudmouths in the street, and I got the better of them in, in the spar, and that's, that was it, really. I was good at it, and I enjoyed getting the better of people who I'd have been intimidated of in the street. So I think it's, it's not nice getting punched in the face, but that's something you just get used to. Did that build your confidence a lot? Massively, built my confidence massively. Um, I, was a, I was a quiet kid, and I think, yeah, I think I owe, I owe a lot to boxing, really. Um, for, you know, I feel like I'm a pretty confident person now, but you know, years ago, I, I wasn't. Do you ever feel you were missing out, particularly when you were younger and your mates were maybe going out at the weekend and you had to make all those sacrifices? At that age, was was it very very difficult to make those decisions to to maybe focus in boxing and and show that discipline even at that age, rather than maybe taking an easy option and going out with your mates? Yeah, well, it it wasn't easy. There was a and do you need to get that balance as well? I think I think so. There was an example where my first lads' holiday, we were going to Turkey with a few boys from the school actually, and um, I got drafted in the box in a, I can't remember, it might have been the European Championships or something, but I'd already paid my deposit for the holiday, and I cancelled the holiday to go away. Um, so these are, it doesn't s seem like a lot, but these are the sort of things that I didn't really want to do at the time, but I knew that I needed to be dedicated to, to what I was doing and, and the boxing. So, But there was a, look, I enjoyed myself as well. There was maybe a few years where you're 16 and 17, you're maybe not as focused as you should be, um, but it probably took a couple of defeats to get me back on track and to, and to realize that I needed to take things a little bit more serious. Is it also maybe at that stage that you realize who your friends are and how important your friends are when they respect the system like that? You see it all the time. Look, I, I, I've got proper friends. I've got, you could count them on one, maybe two hands, max. Um, but you see people coming out of the woodwork all the time. And I, I'm, a, I'm a naive person, and I'm someone who kind of gets taken for a ride sometimes. My wife isn't so much, but I'm starting to learn to spot these guys, and uh, you, soon, you soon know who your friends are. What keeps you going through training? I mean, you, know, you talked about running up uh, Mount Daly and that kind of altitude, and you're pushing your body to the limits. It's not enjoyable. What gets you through and what pushes you on the last 10 seconds, 15 seconds of every single mm. exercise you're going through? Um, I don't know. There's, there's always been a competitiveness in me and I, I just want, you want to be better than the next man and um, running up TD, for example, you know, it's not a competition, but you want to kind of, it's like you're like a child almost. You want to kind of finish first or in the top, top few to say to your coach, like, you know, I'm, I finished near the front here, but silly, isn't it? But that's just the way it is. Um, legacy as well. I want to create a legacy. You know, I've done pretty well. I've won world titles, and um, I've been. And that's pretty much. I mean, that's that second belt you showed to Leo Santa Cruz, mm. right? That's put you in the boxing hall of fame. So every single boxer who ever I sets so. in the ring again is gonna know who Carl Frampton was because of that night. Yeah, it was a big night. It was a big night, and a night I'll never forget. And again, massive underdog and in the fight. I think 35. American journalists were asked who were going to win the fight, and 34 picked him. Um, so I was a huge underdog, but I, I knew that I, had, I just had a belief about me that I could, I could do it and I could beat him. Um, but legacy keeps me going, really. I want people to remember me and talk about me in pubs or wherever they are and remember the great nights against Santa Cruz and, and the nights that are still to come. Lorena Facebook asked, have you ever thought about quitting the sport and what stopped you? Yeah, I've thought about quitting. Um, I kind of had this 
I'm 31 now, I'm 32 in February, and I had this age of 32, and I'm getting out of boxing, that's enough. Um, and I've probably been saying that to myself from about, I was about 27 years old. Wasn't really enjoying the game. Felt like, it felt like it was a, a chore to me, and I, I suppose you should, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a position where I'm, I'm doing a sport that I've done as a kid as my job. Um, so I, sh I should be enjoying it, um, but I wasn't, and I, I didn't like it. And I had this kind of age, 32. Once I'm 32, I'm done. That's it. No matter what's happening, I'm out of this game. But I'm enjoying it now more than I've ever enjoyed it. I feel like as long as I'm still performing, fighting big names and beating big names, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to do it. But even when you were a kid, even you, know, you started when you were seven, um, you played football as well. I'm sure you enjoyed playing other sports. And at that stage, was, was there ever a point in, in your teenage years where you thought, maybe boxing's for me, I'm going to play football with mates instead and you know, enjoy the camaraderie or anything like that? Um, probably not really. I played, I played under 16 level um, for a while for the crews of football. Um, so it was kind of at that age where you need to pick one or the other. Um, and I was a much better boxer than I was at football, so I, I, think, I, I think I made the, the right choice. But I was never really thinking about packing it in at, at that age. Physical strength's one thing. It's obvious. We see you standing in the scales. Um, you're in the shape of your life. The mental side of it is something you've been particularly working on in this camp. But overall, how important is that for a sportsman to have that competitive edge and, and that mental resilience? I think it's, it's very important. Um, I don't think one outweighs the other in terms of um, mental preparation and, and phys physical preparation. You need to be, if you don't have, have them both working alongside each other, you're not really going to succeed, I don't think, anyway. And something I've been doing for the last sort of eight months or so is I've been seeing a sports psychologist, and it's something that I haven't done since I was an amateur. We used to do it with the amateur team. Um, we used to do it in group work and sit together and speak to them, but I've been doing this on an individual kind of basis now, and uh, I feel like it's it's really benefiting me. And you said it like you you said it yourself. You've seen a new demeanour to me, and 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 I was just so focused on this fight week, and I think a lot of that's to do with how strong I've been mentally recently. Um, I just I feel like I don't know. I feel like something's changed, but I'm I'm feeling much better for it. Is that work specifically in a, in a fight situation? Is it a training camp situation? Is it your everyday life? I mean, what, what kind of messages is a sports psychologist trying to get across to you? Well, they're, they're, they're trying to... Obviously, you need to be confident, and everyone... You need to be... Not just in sport, but in any, every walk of life, you need to have a, a bit of confidence about yourself. And to be... There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. You need to be confident, confident that you can do the business and you can still achieve and perform at your high high level. For me, it's about, um, it's about facts and about ticking boxes. So I don't just say something. I, I, I go and, and do it and I record it and I, I look back. I, make a, I have a, a journal um, and I write everything down from start to finish at camp. And the times I would read it. And you kind of just realize you'd write things down. You were working on, on that particular session and you'd read it and then it would just something that would click in your head. So for me, I, I rely on knowing that I've prepared like, like no, no other time. Like I've put everything in, I'm injury free, I'm, I'm just you know, firing on all cylinders. On Saturday night when you entered the ring against a legend, a guy who has won what, seven world titles across four weight divisions, what are the last thoughts in your head? Or is it something, I mean, it's difficult for us to compute because mm. a fight happens so quickly and everything's a split second decision. But what's going through your head throughout that fight and, and using all that psychology to, to make sure that you're the best car front you can be? Um, I, I don't know, you're, you're always, I knew from the start I needed to be switched on and, and I had to be completely aware and, and, and like razor sharp with my focus from start to finish and I feel like I was. Um, it was the most focused I've ever been in a fight. Like, I just felt like I was one step ahead of Denner. Um, I could see, I could see what he was trying to do, but I, and I could see that, for example, he was he was he was trying to land his right hand a lot, but he was trying to do it after a double jab, 
And I seen it coming all the time. Like his double jab was coming out and he's falling short and the right hand was about to come and then he stopped throwing it because I was already, you know, half a foot out of range. So I, I don't know, I just, I, just felt, I just felt like it was one step ahead of him the whole night. How do you take criticism? And how difficult it has been? Because also, I'm sure everyone when, when here is, is aware, on Twitter, anyone can say anyone, anything to anybody or on Facebook or on social media. Something that, you know, when you and I are in school, didn't exist. Mm. Whereas you're having to take criticism from people who you've never met, who you'll never meet, and who'd never say, say it to your face. How, how do you deal with that? It's not, it's not easy, but look, if, I think if I worried about all the, look, the, the positive stuff I get far outweighs the negative stuff, but I think if you worried about the negativity too much, you wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. People like to have digs, and people don't like to see other people doing well, um, and they like to you know, try and knock them down, but... Um, that's just, you, you have to understand that, that that happens, and I suppose a lot of it comes down to a bit of jealousy. Um, but you know, I, I, get this, I get a wee bit, of, wee bit of stick, but not too much. But you just, you, you kind of brush it off. You read it, and maybe it annoys you for 30 seconds, but you forgot about it. You forgot about it soon, soon after. Joe on Facebook has sent in a question saying, Do you have any advice about how to deal with bullies? How to deal with bullies? Um, that's a tough one. I, uh, I've always tell my wee, my wee girl this. My wee girl would be a bit like myself, very, when, when I was younger, very, very quiet and, and timid and easily kind of pushed over. But um, Even when they know who her dad is. What's that? Even when they know who her dad is. Kids are kids, aren't they? Uh, and some of their big farmer dads are bigger <laughs> than me. So, um, look, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Kids get bullied. All the time, I, and I and do you know what? This is this is a story. I met a guy um, recently who I wasn't nice to in school. Um, I don't think I'd say bully, but when you're looking back, maybe it may have been something like that. And I apologized to him a year ago. He was working as a on a an easy jet attendant on the on the flights, and he I got his number. And I, I didn't do this face, I apologized after on the phone. Just something I felt, I felt bad about, but I don't know, just ignore them, ignore them. Tell teachers, tell your parents, tell someone, talk to someone about it. Don't let someone kind of push you around, it's not, it's not nice. Go back to the, the pupils once again. Um, our next question is from Holly. How did you cope when you had your first and only defeat last year? What did you learn from it? Um, it, it was hard. You learn, you learn who's really close to you and, and who's on your team. And um, I think my wife was, was someone who gave me a lot of support through that. And you, you kind of you put a brave face on for the press and the cameras, but it was, it was hard to take. Um, you know, it's, it's a strange feeling. You feel, like, <laughs> you feel like you're done, you're finished, you're on the scrap heap. And, but when I, when I thought about that fight, you know, I lost, you know, I, it was the right decision. I did lose the fight, but it was a reasonably close fight on an under par performance. So I believe that, I believe that when, I'm, when I'm performing, I, I can beat any, any of the top fellas in the world, but it, it wasn't easy. Chloe's up next. At what point in your life did you feel like you could make as a professional boxer? Uh, I don't know. Maybe... I don't know. You pretty pretty young. I knew it was all right when I was young, maybe 13, 14. I knew it was decent and had a bit of talent. But um, to be honest, I never really believed that I would do what what I have done. And it's strange saying that now because I'm, I I still think there's more. I still think there's more to come, and I still think I can win big titles back. And um, so, in a sense of nearly overachieved because I never believed I would do what I, what I have, but there's still a little bit more to come, I think. I think we're all hoping there's a lot more to come this summer at Windsor Park. Nathan is the next man to ask a question to Carl. What habits, what habits do you have to ensure that you're in the right place mentally before a fight? Good question. Uh, habits. I, do you know what? I'm not one of these guys that, that has too many habits. I don't have to do... Uh, so, in... In the, in the hotel, um, so after the weigh-in, I'd maybe 
three or four times that day, I'd, I'd go into my room on my own, make a bit of space, and I'd, I'd go through tactics like shadow box and stuff and, and try and play out how I think the fight's going to go and work on specific shots that I've been working on in the gym. Um, I'd do a wee bit of visualization stuff where I'd just sit in a quiet room and try and image and picture what, what I think and how I think the fight's going to go. Um, but that's it. I don't have... I don't have a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who have superstitions and stuff. I, I, don't, I don't have any superstitions or anything like that. Thank you very much for your questions. It's all about winning at your level of sport. What do you think the key elements are required to be a winner at the highest level? Whether it be boxing, I mean, you, you mentioned working with Rory McIlroy's um, team as well in, in terms of his success, footballer success. What does it take to be a winner in any shape or form in life? I think com commitment, really, and dedication is, is the main thing. Um, I hate saying hard work, dedication. Mayweather says it. That's his mantra, isn't it? That's it what he says. Him, it? But it works for him. And, um, yeah, that's... Because you put your body through hell. I mean, you know, you're looking awfully relaxed now. You've won your fight. But what you push yourself and how you push yourself in training camp, there only are certain amount of people who can physically do that and who, who can mentally do that you know so hard work in yeah. many ways is the key for you i think i genuinely think it is because again i'm not one of the most you know, guys blessed with skill I, I you know i was skillful enough and i was i was decent but i think hard work has really taken me to a level that talent alone wouldn't have got me to are the other guys at the highest level who don't have that work ethic and maybe frustrate you when you see that they are very, very talented. No, for example, in, in golf, Sergio Garcia was always the example where he, all the professionals felt he was just so talented, but he maybe wasn't getting majors when other guys were working harder for them. Mm. Are there even guys in boxing that maybe get by on talent alone, or is it a case that at the highest level, particularly in a sport like that, when there's no hiding place, I you think, can't? I think there probably is guys who get by on talent alone, but then they get found out. Um, for example, I'm not going to say Floyd Mayweather because Floyd Mayweather works extremely hard and, and he portrays this image as if it's just God-given, but he trains hard. He's up, you know, he, he gets up and runs at five o'clock in the morning and trains in the middle of the night and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he does these overnight training sessions and, yeah. and then puts up a picture on Twitter eating a big burger as if yeah. that's just a normal day for him. No, he, he, he trains hard and he's very committed to the sport, but... And he, you may not know him, but any of the boxers will know a guy called Adrian Broner. He's immensely talented, what a fighter, but he lost a few times to guys that shouldn't have, he shouldn't have lost to because he messes around. And there's, there's been so many guys in history like that, in, in my game anyway, that could have, could have done a lot more. You've alluded to it previously, but was there ever a time when you really doubted that you would achieve your goals? Um... Probably, look, you always have doubts, and I think it's strange. Um, I, I was talking about this this week that I've only, the most confident I've ever been going into a fight was for this fight against Denner, and probably when I fought Kiko Martinez um, for the world title. Um, so that the second time I fought him, yeah, I was confident then, I was co very confident against Denner. The rest of them, there's, no matter what anyone, no matter what I've even said myself, you know, in press conferences or whatever, oh, I'm so confident, blah, blah, blah. But there's always been doubts. There's always been doubts. Um, but it's, I don't know, I think I've got, I've got this new, uh, just a new mentality. And I think working with the people that I'm working with at the minute has, has changed a lot of things. What's it like for you whenever you walk out from the dressing room? Because, you know, like the SSA or most arenas, there's a backstage, you're walking around and you're hearing your name being chanted, and you're hearing all the fans. I mean, the couple, you were at the fight on Saturday? I mean, they're all screaming your name. You're hearing all the songs. You're hearing Sweet Caroline. How do you feel at that moment? You've got a job to do, but yeah. you must be just loving it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good, nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. Um, the noise is good. The atmosphere is always amazing, especially in the Odyssey. It's hard to... It's hard to get a better atmosphere in world boxing anywhere, anywhere in the world. Um, it's, it's just very, very atmospheric, but uh, you, you'd be proud. 
You know, it's, you're, I'm proud, but again, I'm, you're, just less, you're listening to the noise, but you're, you're focused on the fight. What does it add to your performance? It definitely adds something, a few percent maybe to, to my performance. And, and that's the difference, I think, at, at top level sport. You know, one or two percent here or there could be a difference between winning and losing. And, and I believe that the, the atmosphere, you know, the crowd being on my side definitely helps me. But I think that it's got to it's gotta have a, an effect negative effect on the opponent. It's got to, you know, I'm, I'm they're landing. Do you landing. think Denier has ever heard anything no. like he heard on Saturday night? No, I don't think so. And I, d I, I think like any time he has success, the crowd kind of go quiet a little bit. Um, but I have, I don't even have to have, I have to hit him on the arm or something, you know, throw a shot and the crowd erupt and they go mad. That's got to, that's got to affect, affect the opponent. Has to. How close do you feel with the crowd? and your fans who have spent thousands of pounds, traveled all over the world, and the guys who watch you on TV back here, who maybe helped you out when you were a kid. Um, how close do you feel with all those people who are so proud of your achievements? Uh, yeah, I, feel, I feel very close are to them. Are you doing it for them sometimes? Yeah, I think so. And I, I've, got, I've got to have, you know, I've got relationships now with some of these guys who have, who have followed me around the world to, to watch me, and I'm going to be forever grateful to them. Um, I believe that in world boxing, there can't be too many, if there is, you know, fighters that are more well supported than me. I, I have the most passionate fans in the world, and I'm very, I'm very, very lucky that, that I have the fan base that I do. And how important is it to surround yourself with good people outside the ring? Very important. And uh, I think, you know, it's just things have changed for me recently. I'm surrounded by good people and I'm surrounded by people who I enjoy to be in their company um, and uh, I'm feeling, feeling much better for it. And they presumably all see as Carl Frampton, not Carl Frampton, two-way, three-time world champion. I don't think anyone sees me like that. You know, I'm just, that's, you know, I'm just, I'm just myself. I'm, I'm no, I'm a guy who went to Glen Gormley High School who can fight a wee bit. That's it, really. Um, so, yeah, they see me as Carl Frampton. What keeps driving you? Because you've got those belts. You know that Ireland's only two weight world champion. You've, you know, you're only one of two Irish fighters. You know, you've made a lot of money. You have been part of some of the greatest fights that any Northern Ireland boxer's ever been involved in. What keeps you going? What gets you up in the morning? Uh, legacy. Uh, uh, so again, people not to forget who I am and, and continue to have a big night. But I, I enjoy fighting in front of big crowds and the atmosphere and fight week, I enjoy that. Um, suppose like family security as well um, from, from my kids and have a chance to have a nice, healthy life um, after boxing and maybe not have to do too much work. Um, so there's a, there's a few things, but you know, my, my kids, I want my kids to be proud of me. And, and for the people who've kind of came and supported me all over the world and, and travelled the, the fans, I think I think I owe them. I think they owe it to them to keep performing for as long as I can because you know, we enjoy the big nights here in Belfast and people enjoy them, but people enjoy travelling and they remember that, you know, they remember, they remember going to New York and me beating Santa Cruz in, in 30 years' time. You're making memories for these people and uh, I suppose it's, you know, I want to repay them as well. What kind of advice would you have for people who find themselves with, with negative influences coming in to their life? What would you, what would you say to them in that situation? Um, I don't know. It's a hard question, isn't it? No, I, I don't know. I, you know, just I think that you have, to, you have to figure out what you want, really, in life. And, and whatever, if there's negative things around you that are kind of stopping, stopping you, getting what you want, then there is no point in them, really. Um, so you need, to, you need to find out. I sound like Gandhi or someone here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. Uh, I don't know. You just need to, you need to get rid of the negativity and, and think of anything that's positive. It's good to have good, positive people around you. I feel anyway that it lifts my spirits. And uh, dealing with negativity only brings stress into my life. Stuart on Facebook said, if you could fight any boxer, dead or alive, regardless of the weight class, who would it be? Dead or alive. 
Uh, I tell you, I've said this a few times, Wayne McCulloch probably, because he's around my weight, be a Belfast Derby. And it was strange, Wayne McCulloch was, was my hero growing up, loved him, loved the ring about him. And it was only about five or six years ago he said he wanted to come out of retirement and fight me, which was like strange. Um, I think his bank manager might have wanted him to come out maybe, of retirement to fight you. <laughs> maybe, but um, yeah, because... It annoyed me a bit that he'd done that, and he'd, he'd known that I'd always said that he was. I looked up to him, and he's my hero, so I'll say I'd like to have fought Wayne McCulloch. Katrina on Facebook says, is Windsor Park happening this August? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Um, yeah, that's, it looks like it's happening. I uh, still get opponents and stuff tied up and definite date, but yeah, it's, it's on, I think. Excellent, all looking forward to that one. Last few questions um, from the audience here. Lucy, where are you? If you want to ask Carl your question. You're clearly a very skilled athlete. Are there any other skills that you like to learn and why? Um, yes, I'd like to learn to speak Spanish. Um, and I think if I, was a, if I was you two young lads here, if I was a boxing manager, I would tell a young Irish fighter, learn Spanish. Imagine going to the States and speaking Spanish and Mexicans would love you. So I'd love to learn Spanish, yeah. Final question from Hamal. What do you think life will be after boxing? I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard one. I don't know. I'm kind of, again, fully focused on, on boxing at the minute. And I think that's something I'll think about when I'm not boxing anymore. But I hope, I hope I don't have to do too much. <laughs> Um, I'm not You've sure. You've always talked about caravan poor rush. Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah. I maybe if I, I keep winning, I might upgrade it to a, an apartment. Ooh. But um, <laughs> or uh, yeah, I love I love the North Coast. Love Port Rush. Just reminds me of childhood. Loves going up there as a kid, and I, I love. You getting, love here, don't you? I mean, I do, you, yeah. you? You love the place. I'd never. I would never move away or live anywhere else. I love. I love. I love home. I really do. Well, thank you very much. That's it for the Super Assembly. Today's program is, of course, available to watch on the Make It website this evening, along with lots of resources that help you make sense of the world of work and help you make the very best that you can be. You can visit bbc.co.uk forward slash make it to find all that information. A huge thank you to everyone here at Glen Gormley High, to the students, to the staff, to the teachers for hosting us. And of course, the one and only Carl Frampton. Please show your appreciation for Northern Ireland's only two-weight world champion. He's getting ready for Windsor Park this summer. From here at his whole school, it's bye-bye.